we're all collaborating and working on this common goal of answering questions about the brain so that we can better the human condition. The neuroscience department has the top minds in the research field in neuroscience. If you want to be doing cutting-edge research, you want to be allowed to explore, to be innovative, and to be pushed towards that. And you want an institution that supports that, and I find that in Mount Sinai. The qualities that I hope to instill in my trainees is a love of asking strange and interesting questions and a fearlessness to approach them and to understand things that have never been understood before. The way I approach mentorship is when you arrive at the lab, the first thing we do is see where your heart lies. What are you passionate about? What are you curious about? What is a problem that you think is important? Then we shape it and then we think about the best way to investigate it. Monsanto does want you to become not a cookie cutter scientist. They want you to be a leader, a leader in the sciences, whether that be at the bench, whether that be as an academician, whether that be outside academia. They just want you to be the best that you can be. The perspective here is that trainees actually hold the most power in the department because we know they are the future, they are the workforce, they are the ones bringing science into the next forefront. If we can predict the cognitive decline before Alzheimer's, before the pathology, if we can look for biomarkers early on to make predictions, maybe then we can prevent that kind of decline later on. As we get older, this area of the brain called the hippocampus, which is very important for storing memories, there are deficits in these cells. So the cells in this area fire less, and so they're less able to encode and store memories. And this decrease in the cell activity actually precedes the cognitive deficits that we see. We can track thousands of these cells and how they encode this information. We can track the molecules that underline the activity of these cells. And then we can develop targeted pharmaceutical drugs to target those molecules to maybe silence those cells. In my lab, we're trying to understand how mutations in autism impact how individuals that are affected by autism process social interaction. One of the recent discoveries is the production of a first model that has a mutation in a gene associated with autism and finding some behavioral alterations that led us to test different therapeutics and some of them seem to have a strong potential as a treatment. There are new discoveries every day that bring hope. We've been studying cognitive strategies, the ability to hold information in mind. How do we optimize a limited capacity system? New technologies are letting us record hundreds or thousands of neurons all at once. And we've been looking at how populations of neurons in the prefrontal cortex rearrange the information that they're holding in mind. We use computational models and complex data analyses to understand those neural activities that we recorded, how they operate together as an integrated circuit. What we're finding is that when you impose structure on the information, how we chunk information that we're holding in mind, the information becomes more distributed among a larger set of neurons than if you are remembering specific bits of information. The big problems we're trying to solve is, can we change memories, particularly emotional memories, and can we reverse the course of traumatic memories? Uh, these are the big questions we want to answer. There have been some breakthroughs from our own lab, which hint of the possibility that it could be possible to change uh, memories. In terms of understanding the brain, the bold vision that we have now is maybe we can intervene and direct brain processes to target these fear memories and traumatic memories that we want to change. If by understanding some of these processes you can help and reduce suffering, that would be more than I can hope for. It's really a place that I think it's a hidden gem because it's family, it's love, but it's also science. 